<clears throat> Good morning. It's Wednesday, nine o'clock. <clears throat> I'm still alive. Let's see if anybody else is on here today. Waiting, waiting. Oh, here's Miss Wendy. Glad you're on here, Miss Wendy. Look like Quam went okay last night. Kosha, tell Nate. I said thank you for taking care of that route last night. I am thankful that whatever this was that Teresa and I had, seemed like it was just a 24 hour thing. So we are uh, <clears throat> back at it today. Sounds like the wind has uh, decided to blow again today. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm, if I was going to be sick, yesterday was a good day, I guess. It was nasty out. So, <clears throat> but, yep, here we are. So, yeah, that was a, that was a crazy one. That uh, sickness was, uh, glad it only was uh, 24 hours. So, <clears throat> we're live. Here we are. <laughs> Did we really? Oh, that's good, Wendy. Yeah, amen. I love that. Uh, add some more to the account. More little kids trusted Christ last night. Uh, <clears throat> nothing better than that. I'm sorry I wasn't there for that. <clears throat> but good morning. Glad all you guys are here. Glad I'm feeling better. And, uh, you know, I was thinking, though, that if I, if I didn't get better and I ended up dying... I go to heaven. I wouldn't have to worry about hearing Pelosi's name. <laughs> uh, wouldn't hear Hillary anymore, would I? <laughs> oh, dear. That's bad. <laughs> All right. Well, I got a lot to do today here, so I want to... Uh... <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, it's... Uh... It's a good day, right? <clears throat> so, number of things oh, I want us to look at. Joyce Sperry, glad you're on here. Uh, did you get to go home, Miss Joyce? I hope you did. Sorry, I didn't check on you yesterday. So, I had all kinds of people trying to call, and I was like, can't answer anything today. But, <clears throat> yes, so lots of things to go on here. I want to share some of these with you, and, and, uh, yeah, uh, just uh, today, Miss Joyce gets to go home today. Well, that's good, Joyce, and we'll be continuing to pray for you, and uh, good to hear that. So, first thing that I read this morning was out of Chapel's uh, devotional, and uh, I, I want to share this one with you. Uh, it was pretty powerful, and just talking about the power of God on our lives, and in and, and Luke 9, 38, uh, through 40 and behold a man of the company cried out saying master i beseech you look upon my son for he is my only child and lo a spirit taketh him and he suddenly crieth out and it teareth him that he foameth again and bruising him hardly departeth from him <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me and i besought thy disciples to cast him out and they could not and uh <clears throat> excuse me i'm sorry uh, this is what Chapel wrote about this. While Jesus was on the Mount, Trans Mount of Transfiguration with Peter, James, and John, there was a father who brought his demon-possessed son to the other disciples, and but they couldn't help. And it's especially sad because uh, earlier in chapter 9, we had uh, seen that they had been sent out and specifically empowered by Christ to deal with this very problem, right? And... Uh, uh, yet, despite what Jesus had uh, said, they did not believe they could deal with the demonic power that confronted them. And as a result, the demon remained until Jesus returned. And and it really is kind of a sad thing, right? <clears throat> and the old preacher Vance Havner said, Too many of us today are shaky about what we believe, but not shaken by what we believe. Too many people assemble at God's house who don't really believe in the power of God. 
Having begun in the spirit, we live in the flesh. That's powerful. Having begun in the spirit, we live in the flesh. Never has a church had more wire stretched with less power in it. As the hymn puts it, all is vain unless the spirit of the Holy One comes down. The challenges of the world that we face are too great for our own strength, but we are not meant to operate in our own strength. The problem is not a lack of power on God's part, but our failure to tap into the power source he has given us. You can rest assured that whatever comes your way today, God has the resources to help you overcome it. Rather than looking at your problems and feeling insufficient, look to your Savior and depend on his power. And we all need to do that. And we need to, uh, well, we just need to walk in the Spirit far more than we do. And we need to guard our hearts, guard our minds. We need to stay in the Word. We, we need to consciously uh, allow that Holy Spirit to guide us and, and direct us and, and know that, that he's always there. And, and, uh, uh, that was a, that was a great way to start the morning, just to depend on the, the power of God to help me through today and to, to get things done that I need to do and, and stay on track in, in my mind and, and, uh, with my heart and, uh, know that, that God's got things taken care of. And also with that, I was reading in Deuteronomy uh, 29 and 30 today. And first of all, 29, 29 says, the secret things belong unto the Lord, our God. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. So first of all, don't, don't be spending all your time on the secret things of God just the things that he has let us know about, those things we need to promote and know that there are some things that we may never understand and that's okay. By faith, we trust him that he's got all things under control and and we trust him with that. And then he goes on here in, in chapter 30 and this goes along with a major part of my thinking today in the in the devotions today it is, is how that God wants far more than just outward actions in our lives. He, he wants our hearts. And if he has our hearts, then he'll have our obedience and, and, and he'll have our lives, right? In verse 6 of, of 30, it says, And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. Verse 8. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. Verse 10, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in the book of this law. And if thou turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul. And um, it just goes on in verse 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. So, here we 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 understand that you know there's good and there's bad and and this world is full of it and obviously he's allowed this to happen so that we by love will in in our love obey him and walk with him and that's what we need to do sometimes i get too focused on the inequities of the evil that's going on and uh you know, become discouraged or, you know, angry or whatever your mind takes off. And, and I just need to understand that, that God has allowed those things here to strengthen my faith and, and to use my obedience as a, um, as a light to those that, that don't understand anything about God and walk with him. And, and uh, um, and he ends this in verses 19 and 20, last two verses of chapter 30. I call heaven and earth to record, to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, 
that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give them. And it, it just reminded me of how important it is to uh, give him my heart. And, and, you know, so often we have, I, I don't know, just this idea that that uh, it's all show. And, and it's so hypocritical with that. I just... Uh, have a hard time with the hypocrisy of things and where people, I, I don't know, you don't have to share all your garbage and, and I understand that, but um, don't let people think that you got everything together all the time. You know, I, I mean, it just, uh, I don't know. That's when you get yourself in trouble and uh, you, you will uh, uh, be, you'll end up being a mess. So, and then I read this in, in Proverbs today and, I, I read a lot of good things today, but time-wise, I don't think I can share them all. But um, Psalm 77, I read Psalm 77 today, and, and it starts off, it, it really is a, a psalm of desperation. And and uh, you read it, and, and uh, he just really having a struggle with some of the things that are going on. And uh, But then he says, in verse 11, here's how he cures that, that, those issues. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. I will meditate also of thy work and talk of thy doings. You know, sometimes we'll get overwhelmed too. And, and this Psalm is powerful in that. Those, those first, uh, uh, nine, ten, first 10 verses of, of Psalm 77. Are, are pretty desperate. And, but he says, how do, and he never says just stay in it and dwell in that and live there. That's not at all. He goes on then in verses 11 through the rest of the, of the Psalm that he remembers the works of the Lord and, and he remembers the wonders of old and, and, uh, he, uh, will meditate on God's work and he'll, and he'll talk of thy doings. I mean, we need to do the same thing. And, Remember the things that God's done in your life and look back to those at times to encourage you and, and then uh, meditate on that and meditate on who God is, right? Stop, stop being overwhelmed by your thoughts that you're having. Stop with that and start thinking about God and thinking about who he is and the promises that he gives us in his word and then talk of them. Tell others about them. You know, one of the the, 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 one of the best antidotes to, uh, getting out of the funk that you're in is, is by starting to focus on others. And as you focus on others and helping others, you'll, you'll find that it will heal you. And God has made us that way. And that's why the society is so against that. And culture tries to teach against that, you know, and, and, and instead give your heart to, to serving the Lord and loving the Lord and obeying him. And, and he'll use you as a tool and, and help you to heal and, and to be stronger in your walk and, and how we all need that at times and, and allow God to use you. And, and then I read this one in Proverbs 12 today in verse 20. It says, deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil. Okay, we, we know that, right? But to the counselors of peace is joy. You know, I, I, um, I, I think that <clears throat> we're, we're, in a, we're in a crazy world and, and judgment's coming. I, I mean, I, you, you look at the, you, you look at the smugness of Governor Polis as, as he signed that, that abortion bill in on, on uh, Monday, um, the smugness that he had, you know, uh, just the wickedness of that, the, um, I, I, don't, I don't know, but you, you see a lot of those things and, and you, and you see a world today that, that's full of hatred. You see a world that's full of deceit and wickedness and, and all of those things. And, 
And yes, judgment is coming. And I and we need to we need to preach and teach judgment is coming. Absolutely. You need to get your heart right with God and and do the right things. And and um but sometimes in in, in all the hatred and everything, you, you ever given thought that that sometimes people just need to hear that there is actually someone out there that cares and that loves them. And uh, we need to be a counselor of peace and joy. I, 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 the, the gospel, what does the word gospel mean? It means the good news, right? We need to share the good news. We, we need to be, we, I, I need to be, all right, my devotion, right? So uh, for me, I need to be uh, more optimistic. I need to be more uh, uplifting and 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 share the the goodness of God and and yeah sometimes you need to declare judgment on some on some things but there are also times where what we need to do is declare the good news and tell people the truth that Jesus Christ loves you and and that you can have joy in your your life you can have a peace and a satisfaction that only God can give and 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 we need to look to Him and and uh, I I just uh, am reminded of the the counselors of peace is joy. You know, I I watched on uh, Facebook yesterday um, the the funeral service for uh, Nash Ryder, and and you know, just another one. You, your heart just goes out uh, to these families that have lost their loved ones and young kids like that, and how how hard it may be and, and to, to lose someone like that. And it, it just, I don't know, broke my heart and just reminded me. Then I read that this morning. L let me be a counselor of peace and, and joy and, and, and tell people that you can be forgiven. Whatever's gone on in your life, it's okay that you can take that to God and, and, It'll be covered under the blood and, and forgiven and forgotten by him and how thankful we ought to be for that. And so uh, those were some of the things that I just out of that one little verse, just the the importance of, of that and uh, looking uh, to him and just being a counselor of peace and joy. Right. And then I was reading in in Luke chapter 11, last thing, and it goes along with what I was reading in Deuteronomy 30, where God wants your heart. I mean, we got enough fakes out there. Let's not be a fake. Let, let, let us love the Lord with all of our heart, soul, and mind, right? And, and in Luke 11, starting with verse 37, he started dealing with the Pharisees. And this is what Jesus told the Pharisees. He said, and the Lord said unto him, now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. Ye fools, did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also? I mean, they, they were really good at putting on a really good show. And and uh, I mean, he, he went right after them. And then it this is what the lawyer said in verse 45. <clears throat> and... and uh, says, then answered one of the lawyers and said unto him, Master, thus saying, thou reproachest us also. So now the lawyers are mad at him too. And so what does he say to them? Woe unto you also, ye lawyers, for you laid men with burdens grievous to be born, and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. I mean, he uh, he just went after them and, and uh, just laid it out. See, that's what I'm saying. There there are times when when uh, you you rebuke people and and you go through this and the the two people that the the two types that he rebuked he, he rebuked the the uh, the hypocrites, the religious hypocrites, the Pharisees, Sadducees, the lawyers, the scribes, those people who thought that they were holy by doing, uh, he went right after them and showed them that, that uh, that's not going to save you. And, and he even told Nicodemus, remember Nicodemus comes to him in the dark and, 
And, and he's saying all these things. And, and Jesus just looks at him and says one thing, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And they're showing us that works will not save you ever. It, it's all in the grace of God. And, and, and so here they're putting burdens upon people and, and he's calling them out for that. And, and you, you know what happens when you, uh, you, you start preaching against uh, religion and start preaching a relationship with Jesus, well, the, the religious zealots will get very angry with you. And it says, and he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to say, speak of many things, laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. And uh, that... And and that's always going to happen. You know, the world is going to try to trick you up. The the religious zealots like that are going to try to trick you up. And and uh, Jesus is real, and it's a relationship that we have with Him. And and with that relationship, then we give Him our heart, our soul, and our mind, and our body. And and we allow Him to guide us and lead us in what we do, what we don't do, and. And we just avoid the temptations that, that the world throws at us. And, 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 uh, we, we just keep moving in the direction that God wants us to do because it's He that we need to please. And then I read this in chapter 12 and, and it tells us this. First of all, remember this. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be, uh, that shall not be known. So live transparently with God and just know that he's got things and we, we lay them at his feet. And, and uh, when we mess up, we lay it at his feet. We, we confess it to him. We get it right with him. And then we move on and, and, and uh, we just could care less what other people think. And this is what he says later on, verses four and five. But I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body and after that, have no more that they can do. Well, they can't do anything to you after they kill you, right? So what is it? And, but I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him, which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. That's the one that we fear. And, and here we know that if we're forgiven, then we have the promise of heaven and, and we have a God that loves us and will protect us and take care of us. And, and so whatever the challenges are of the day, no matter how honorary people might get towards us, it's okay. We, we trust in the one that has power over heaven and hell, the, the one that has power over evil and good, the one that has power over our lives. We live for him. We walk with him. And then he said in verse seven, I'll end with this, but even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Isn't that good to know? Isn't it good to know how much he loves us and how much he cares? And, and when, when we have a Psalm 77 moment that we, we are desperate that, that uh, he, he doesn't, um, cast us aside, but he'll come to us and he will, Give us exactly what we need, whether it need to be a, a shoulder to cry on or whether it be a kick in the pants to get us moving, whatever it, whatever it is, he, he will give us exactly what we need and, and he will continue to, to use us when we are obedient to him. And we just need to be obedient to him. My obedience shows my love for him. And so we need to be obedient and in being obedient, People see that we love our Savior, and uh, that's what it's about. So anyway, those are the thoughts today. Uh, not much in the news other than Obama was at the White House yesterday. I don't know if you saw that. Gave a speech and used the pronoun I 33 times. You know, the, the pride and the arrogance of people today, uh, truly a sad thing, isn't it? And uh, one day these people will bow, their knees will bow, their tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And if they have not trusted him as savior, they'll be cast into hell. That's a, that's a fair warning. 
And I am thankful that I am not bound for hell. I'm thankful that Jesus Christ saved me and gave me eternal life and uh, we can live for him. So you guys hang in there. Have a good day. Don't let the wind blow you away. And uh, Lord willing, if I continue to feel better, we'll probably be there at our prayer meeting tonight. So God bless you guys.